we've got something special in here that we haven't done before is this it's 2021 Shelby GT500 Mustang actually we got this car from a client in Knoxville we actually did his Raptor we watched our Raptor video and he brought his Raptor to us and now he can't drive his GT500 because he said the stereo is not good at all beautiful car actually some nice wheels brakes did some performance upgrades to it so we're going to get into this thing it's a pretty nice car it has a let's open the door kind of hard to see but this car has a rear seat delete it has really nice recaros from factory it's got actually a B&O system in it from factory should be able to tackle this great it looks like it has a some type of speaker in the lower part of the door has a mid-range here top of the door and has a factory tweeter location so we're going to try to keep this one the plan for this one is to keep everything kind of in stock locations we're not going to build anything we want to keep the car looking pretty much stock empty slate here in the trunk got a empty trunk factory subwoofer which we're going to remove and this car doesn't come with a spare so it's uh got lots of space we're gonna do something a little showy back here I think it's gonna be pretty cool we're gonna kind of keep it you know carpet vinyl some lights we're actually planning on doing a pretty awesome subwoofer setup in here kind of go over with you guys the equipment list we kind of purchased all the equipment already for it we kind of know what we're doing we're gonna do flax three ways in the front um, keep the OEM radio we're gonna do flax coaxes in the rear we're actually going to do four, let me turn this around, got a pile of stuff right here, down on this shelf. This is all the equipment that we're going to put in this bad boy right here. We got some Moscone Pro 530s, got some Flax 3-ways, got a 8-12 to Aerospace DSP, four Flax 10s shallows, got an Amp Pro. AP4 FD21, which will do the integration to the factory stereo, a bunch of Redenzo product, and uh, an awesome car. So let's get started. Okay, so we got the car in the bay. Um, the first thing we're going to do is get this prep to work on. Um, we're going to do some uh, JK Tapes protection film on the vehicle so we don't scratch it when we're working on it. We're also going to hook up a battery tender to the battery and get this thing basically prepped to work on. If you guys are ever doing a project of your own, um, you can also hit us up at the shop here and you can we can sell you a roll of this JK Tape Tape protection film. Um, they have it for exterior and interior. I'll show you guys some interior stuff later on in the build. 
but uh, check it out it's really awesome if you're transporting your car it's really good to cover the front end um, if it's in an open trailer or uh, if you're doing a project or a long-term project you know it's nice to protect the vehicle when you're working on it all right guys we got the Nathan and I got this thing uh, covered in some JK tapes paint protection film basically it's a temporary uh, film that just clings to the vehicle it comes right off doesn't leave any adhesive by or an adhesive on the car after you take it off got the sills the quarters tops the whole back because we're going to be leaning in here a lot working on the trunk so I don't want to lean up against this tape we got the sills done edge of the door I like to always do opening and closing the door all the time and then obviously the fenders um, when we do under the hood and everything so so just our common work areas will get protected and uh, that's it so now we're gonna we're gonna go over some equipment that we're gonna do in here um, kind of explain everything that we're gonna do we have a um, equipment list over here what do we have let's see let's see what we got so we got got a flax three-way kit for the front doors that's what we're gonna put in the front door that'll be the front and then we got these guys flax coaxes for the rear it's rear rear deck I guess that's where that's gonna go don't want to skip over this we got a AP4 FD21 amp pro that's actually gonna basically be the integration to the radio that plugs in behind the radio it's actually it's weird because it says it's a B&O system but it actually has a Sony amp in it this is a amp pro for Sony so I don't know what Ford's doing with that but that's how it is actually move this over our next uh, piece of the puzzle in line after the amp pro from the amp pro we'll go into a Moscone uh, 8 to 12 aerospace that'll handle all the crossing over equalizer uh, time correction basically the the tuning of the system and then I'm not gonna get these we'll, we'll unbox these later and show you but two five channel amps two pro 530s lots of power um, they're about 1300 and 90 something watts a piece um, so what we'll end up doing is uh, running one on the left of the car, one on the right of the car, which will be a cool setup. We'll kind of go over that with you guys as we get there. And then we chose to do quite a bit of bass. Um, can never have too much in my, my opinion. You can always turn it down. Sometimes if you don't have enough, it's kind of a bummer. Um, so this system should play loud, clear, and image very well and, and sound really, really, really good. Um, so we, we're going to do four four tens and a sealed cabinet um, we'll kind of go over that right now with you guys as far as what we're going to do with the cabinet um, we have some ideas that we've been uh, going over so let's see if it'll actually work you know when we have an idea to do something sometimes when you get to get to doing it it doesn't really work out as planned but I think we'll be okay um, so in the trunk we'll have four tens four ten inch flax shallows two amplifiers and a DSP. The rest of the gear, obviously the flax coax is in the rear, the flax three-way kit, which is here, it's a pretty cool kit, it has a six and a half inch mid-base, three inch mid-range, and a tweeter, and that is going to go in stock locations car already has a has a uh, six and a half according to the book uh, mid-range driver up here and then it also has a tweeter in the a pillar 
So we're going to keep all these drivers in factory locations. We're going to go ahead and start. I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take these doors off. Um, we'll start with the passenger side. Take the driver side off. We'll get these on the shelf. Um, and then we'll start, you know, coming up with a plan for this, for, you know, what sound treatment we're going to use, best, best approach to, you know, treating these doors. We've got to see if we can do a block off plate like we always do. Um, we'll see if that's even possible. Nathan got the doors off, so we have a factory, looks like a six and a half, uh, three and a half. These, are, these drivers definitely aren't going to last a long time. They're going to have to be replaced at some point. They have uh, foam surrounds, which usually rot out and speakers buzz and pop and crackle. And so that's, you guys will be replacing speakers in these things in the near future once these things rot out. A shame they don't use rubber so they last the life of the vehicle but uh and then it looks like here it's exactly what i thought this factory weather barrier s sits down into the door you can see it it goes back i don't know about a about an inch or so back into the door so we cannot build a simple flat block off plate like we normally do unless we did something to the door panel which we're not going to do also has a little cover here so all right so we got the doors off it looks like uh most likely we have a um we have a six and a half inch adapter that we use in the f-150s for the rear i believe it's probably the same adapter we'll go ahead and you know check that out we'll pull this factory speaker off and see um see how that'll fit in there Looks like it's the same exact as a Ford F-150 rear. So we already actually have an adapter made for this, most likely. And then we have a, a three inch location at the top of the door. Um, we definitely don't have an adapter made for that, so we'll have to whip one up. We'll show you guys the whole process on how we get that stuff done. Decide if we'll laser cut it on the laser, CNC something out, I'm not sure yet, or just make it by hand. Um, so we'll, we'll plan on doing some sound treatment to these doors. And then we're going to go ahead and get this uh, one of these pillars off so we can see what we got. Got to get the radio out. Nathan said he's he can take that radio out in like 10 seconds. I have to see that one. Holds the pillar in place. That looks easy to get out. Oh, you got to just be a little barbaric. <laughs> Comes from experience. Okay, let me see the back of that, Nathan. Clip in. Oh, cool. It's a clip in tweeter. So we'll have to figure out what we're going to do to fit the flax tweeter in there. There's a cool Ford mesh grill on it that matches the door, and the, the two door locations have the same grill. So that's the pillar. I just heard the, uh, the door go gling gling. What's going on? What's going on? Oh, look! Look everyone, it's the computer guy. Hey computer guy, good morning computer guy. Don, Don the computer guy, look. Don the computer guy, he loves the morning, see? What's up Don the computer guy? It's amazing. Yeah? Yes. What are y'all doing? Uh, you know, taking apart the Mustang, seeing what we can do in it. You wanna see what we're doing? Yeah. We got Don the computer guy. We got Nathan, Curly. Curly. We got Curly in the house. Kind of just going through right now and um, figuring out, kind of confirming a couple things we assumed. What yeah. do you think? Looks like a factory system. You like that foam surround on those speakers? Try. That's gonna la last a long time. Yeah. I think we should do a vacuum formed <laughs> ABS block off plate. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, see how that door sits into the 
sinks in. It has. To, it would have to go in. Oh, the door fits the door. into the. The Got door it. fits into that cavity. So, I don't know about doing a block off plate. That's why I was saying a vacuum formed. At least it doesn't have a huge opening, and I'm pretty sure it's uh, mm. reinforced by the door panel that touches there. So if we do some treatment on the back of the door, I think it'll be a good good fit. Anything you want to say, Don? Enjoy the video. All right, guys, let's move on to uh, getting the factory amp out. Did you get a light, Nathan? I got this crappy light. Nathan likes my crappy light. Look, this is my crappy light Nathan doesn't like. <laughs> but look, look at that. You can I see. Can see. What is that? Yep, there's the factory amp. Okay. And that's a, what kind of amp is that? A Sony amp or a that, B&O amp? That's a Sony amp. That's interesting. And look what the system says. B&O. But it has a Sony amp. B&O with a Sony amp. B&O with a Sony amp. <laughs> that's weird. They actually do that in some of the Fords also. It'll be in the Super Duties, it'll be labeled B&O, but it'll actually have a Sony amp. But all, mainly all the newer cars that say B&O actually are a B&O and require a Zen module from NavTV. But this particular car is a Sony system with B&O badging, which it just says B&O right here on the center channel grill. It doesn't say it anywhere else in the vehicle. So. So basically what we're working on now, we located the factory amp, we, we know where the factory speakers are located. Now we have to basically design, fabricate, and lay the foundation for all of the new audio gear. So that's what we're going to get working on now. Um, we also have to pull the radio out, plug in the amp pro. Um, so that's what we're working on now. Next driver we're going to work on as far as speaker fitment we'll be getting a adapter made to put our three inch um, mid-range in the top of the door and we'll have to see how we're going to do that you want to grab a uh, t20 nathan if you have one a couple ways to do this let's see what happens when you just unscrew these two t20s i think this is the same driver that Ford uses in the center channel location of the F-150 or Raptor that we've done and yep it looks like it's looks like it's nope it definitely doesn't want to come off like that it's wired into that adapter. it's like wired into the adapter so let's let's uh put this all back in here <laughs> looks like we might uh end up making a complete adapter so there's three That's the uh, the factory speaker, and you can see that it's literally soldered right to the speaker connection. So this is, to me, like the whole speaker. You could technically just cut these out with a pair of uh, wire snips, unbolt the speaker, and most likely just fit a three-inch driver in that little housing. But we're gonna. I think it's best if we, the whole idea is being able to put this back to factory. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and make a whole new adapter that mounts right here to these, these, uh, these standoffs right here. So.
All right, guys, I want to basically just walk you through real quick of what we've accomplished. So, as you can see in the trunk, we have a bunch of bare wood parts covering up the install right now. There's no woofers in it. There's some amps mounted um, in the trunk. Um, basically what we did so far, which I'm going to actually pull this, pull all this stuff, stuff out of the trunk and show you guys. Um, we have the amplifiers installed, wired up, uh, and the foundation basically laid in the trunk. And we also, everything's already wired up. Um, we did full sound treatment in the doors. We installed a set of KX3 focales in the front using stock locations. Um, Obviously, with the stock locations, we utilized our speaker adapter that we made for this vehicle to hold the six and a half in the front door location. We also machined out a adapter to hold a three inch mid range in the stock location um, and source the plugs mid range adapter. Literally, we have the plug plugs right in to stock wiring. Um, so we got that done, got a mid base done. We also are going to go over the mounting of the tweeters, which we're going to do some cool stuff with that. In this particular vehicle, we have a harness that plugs in the kick panel where the factory amplifier is. Um, absolutely no wires were cut in this install. Um, all harnesses, we sourced all the proper harnesses, amplifier, speaker, everything. So that's kind of an overview of what, where we're at now. As far as the system goes, um, everything is already installed and actually turns on and, and works, um, minus the subwoofers that are not installed in the trunk yet. So let me go ahead and show you guys. I'm going to go ahead and pull um, pull all this stuff out of here. Um, and so this is going to be a, an insert in the middle of the install. It's going to have some logos and stuff on it. This is all, actually we. We designed all this stuff previously on another Mustang, so we basically had all this information in the computer, so we're able to cut all these basic parts out on the CNC. And in this video, we're going to actually do some router work, do some finishing with vinyls and different materials and lighting and all that stuff and kind of go through and show you guys how this goes from nothing to a nice showy, really nice install. So. Just pull all this stuff out of here and set it on the table so I can show you guys a little bit better of what we got going on in here. So pull all these parts out. Got quite a few parts, different layers per se. So get all that stuff out of the way and then we'll go step by step as you can see we have in this particular install we have two Moscone Pro 530 amplifiers um, one five they're five channel amps um, so basically this left amplifier here runs the whole left side of the vehicle so there's a, a channel for the left front tweeter a channel for the left front mid-range channel for the left rear mid base or left front mid base, rear mid base, and then the last fifth channel is bridged on a pair of 10 inch subs. And then that's mirrored to the other side of the vehicle. So two Pro 530s, and then all the processing for the system is done by a Moscone DSP, which basically takes the signal from the factory radio and it routes it out to each amplifier channel to then go to the each appropriate speaker in the vehicle. And then we also have some power distribution, power ground, zero gauge that's ran from front to back. Um, so zero gauge ground and zero gauge power is ran from the battery to the back of the vehicle. And then it's all wrapped up in JK tapes. Uh, wire treatment all tied down. And then we, we basically built a complete floor in the vehicle um, and upholstered it, mounted everything down. Um, and then we took these one inch HDPE blocks, which is going to space our trim panel off the floor to support everything to make it nice and strong. So these are plastic spacers that are screwed down into the, the basically the, the foundation of the install. 
So what we have left to do is the box is sitting in here. It actually needs to be mounted in the. Let's see if I can get this out of here. So got a couple parts. If you look down in here, there's a factory. Um, this is the factory tie down for the jack assembly that's in the vehicle, and there's actually two M6 10 millimeter bolt holes already threaded there. So we're going to utilize these to mount the enclosure down to the floor, and we're going to have to basically I cut this cut this piece out. We're going to cut a rectangle in it, and then there's a combination of stacked parts that meet up, and then we'll put two bolts in it and secure all that and that'll bolt down into the floor into a factory location to hold this enclosure in place. And this is a one and a half cubic foot um, stack fabbed enclosure that we cut on the CNC that fits into the factory wheel well location. Um, we didn't cut any metal, we didn't drill any holes in the vehicle except for the power wire through the firewall. We use a special gland for that. Um, other than that, literally no wires cut. Um, all factory bolt bolt bolting locations in the vehicle. So basically in this video we're going to go through the whole process of, of uh, finishing this out and making it look really cool. So we got this part cut out which is going to go down in here and basically fit down in here um, on the enclosure. We need to cut this rectangle out of it so this piece fits down and that factory part sticks up through. So I have a little piece of paper and I did some measurements. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and go into the wood shop and mark this out, lay this out, and we'll go ahead and router a hole here into this part. And then we can go ahead and get our layers. This piece goes down first, has a rectangle cut out and then we have this piece which will space it up a little bit and then this last piece goes on and we can put our bolts through there so let's go ahead and go to the shop and mark this out and router this hole out all right so it's two and three quarters up from the back just go ahead and Mark that two and three quarters, and I need a straight edge ruler. Just mark a line here on it. And then basically, what I did is from this edge over to this final edge, it's seven and a quarter. We'll go ahead and measure seven and a quarter here. And then this basically that's basically the cutout in it. I'll just check my measurements. Cool. Good. So we're going to go ahead and go over to the router and go ahead and router, router this out. We'll tape this down and router this out. So go ahead and drill a hole in here for our router bit to go through. Take it over here. And use some template tape, tape this down, it's a really thin two-sided tape, we can stick this down where we want to cut the hole out, get some good pressure on it, and then we want to set our router Right. So we'll set it right right above the work. So that what's going to happen is this bearing is going to run on our template. And 
cut out the wood below. So go ahead and turn this on. Wait till it stops and pull it off. And we'll go to the car and see if it fits. Sit this over the opening. We'll do some marks around here. Is there a pencil? And then we have a even amount of material so we can glue this piece to the floor of the enclosure. That'll fit in like that. And then this will go over top and then we can let me grab a bolt so this should line up there I have to kind of adjust this oops so we'll end up putting a pair of bolts and some washers and everything through our panel and that'll thread into the the factory holes so that this can be bolted down and the enclosure will be securely mounted to the vehicle so now we'll go grab some ca glue which is like a industrial super glue and we'll go ahead and get this stuff mounted in place and i go ahead and mark this first so it lines we can line it back up on here we'll pop that off and glue this basically glue this all together right here and then we'll put a bead of glue around here and glue it to the enclosure so we can bolt it in So we'll go ahead and put some CA glue on here. This is an activator that makes the CA glue dry pretty much instantly. Go ahead and line this up. Get it glued in place. Good. Do another layer here. Lay it on our opposite part. Go ahead and line it up and glue your fingers to it. So, there we go. So, that done fits so the factory part will fit up inside of there then we can put our bolts through here and bolt it down so we'll go ahead and get this glued into the vehicle now we'll take our ca glue with us and i think that's it nice layer of just make sure there's no dust or anything on there Go ahead and do a nice bead of this glue all the way around. Can't see what I'm doing. Out of my way. Put a bead of glue all the way around there, a nice hefty layer. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in here. I don't want to spray activator on it now because I want to be able to kind of position it around and get it really lined up with these bolts. 
V spray activator on there, it'll instantly dry when you touch it down. And that's not good. The stuff will eventually dry on its own. Looks good. And I'll just go ahead and spray a little bit of activator around. that so now I can go get a 10 millimeter get a 10 millimeter and go ahead and tighten these down Go back and forth until I get this thing nice and snug. Alright, so now the enclosure is bolted to the floor of the vehicle. You can almost lift the car up by the enclosure now. It's all, um, before we put the enclosure in there, we actually sound, we used a sound treatment and sound treated the whole well and the floor and all that stuff in here so there's sound treatment under the box um, and actually the, the enclosure is actually carpeted as well so that's no like wood to metal so it's not going to squeak or anything like that want to make sure everything is well insulated um, you never want to put an enclosure directly on metal it can if you know it can move and make squeaks and noises in the vehicle so we put sound treatment and upholstery underneath the enclosure to make sure it's, you know, real nice finish. So now, once this is bolted in, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna go ahead now, the next step, as you can see, this is just a piece of three quarter inch MDF here. I'm gonna go ahead and make a brace to mount from here to the top of this to brace the center of this enclosure to make it a lot more rigid, so. That's the next step. Once we get that done, we'll go ahead and move on to putting some acoustic insulation in here. Go ahead and get the woofers wired up, installed, and then we'll move on to the next layer. We're going to add some braces to the enclosure now. Cut these blocks. They're something and something sixteenths. And we're going to mount these in here on each side to add some rigidity to the enclosure. You get the point. They fit in here very securely. So we're gonna we're gonna use a uh, pocket hole drilling thing that I have in there and I'm going to show you how that works. We're going to mount these down to the bottom and then we're going to actually screw, we're going to pre-drill and screw through the top of the enclosure and mount into the top of these blocks basically to connect the front baffle to the back baffle and make it a lot more secure than it already is. So let's go do that. Craig, we're using Craig to mount these. So, there's a pocket hole thing. I'm gonna basically put this in the middle and clamp this down to the wood and then use the supplied drill bit.
Now we can put a screw down in there and screw right into the bottom of the enclosure. Awesome. The other way to do it would be to take the whole enclosure back out of the vehicle and do all that fun stuff, but we're going to use this, which I really like. That's how I mounted the, uh, made that, that uh, desk for Kalani, and I mounted the, the frame, the legs, and the back to the top with this. I just put these in there and we took it to the house in pieces and I just screwed it together. It was raining and it wouldn't all fit in the truck assembled. So now we got pocket screws. Let's see it drilled through here. Get this sanded off. Get these holes. can put wood glue here, wood glue here, line them up in the in the uh, enclosure and we can screw these down into the bottom of the enclosure and then we'll pre-drill through the top and mount this in. So now we need wood glue and we need the screws to mount these which are in my car because I took them home to build my son a desk. So I'm gonna go get those real quick. Alright so these are the screws that you get. You get this set from Lowe's or Home Depot. It comes with a bit square drive and then the screw goes down in there and you can screw it to the screw it in. Pretty awesome. So special screws whole nine yards, pretty cool. So let's grab this, this. We need the drill, this tip. We also need to get all of our stuff together to go on the hike back to the car. <laughs> so we got this, this, we got this. We need a drill. So wood glue, we got some other type of screws. These are Torx wood screws. That'll, we'll pre-drill through the face and Mount the top of this, got a drill bit, pocket screws, got a drill. I think you have the T20, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to put wood glue on the top. Of it. I'm gonna flip it over, put some wood glue on the bottom. Cool. Get that on there. And then gonna get that lined up there. I'm gonna use this this block from the from the install to make sure that this is this is square and right where I want it. I want to make sure it's move it back a little bit. Make sure it's in between these two woofers and there. So now we got it in place. Grab my Two of these and can get the screw. And screw it in. There we go. Same thing on this side. Some glue. 
Remember, this is, there's a, actually a panel that covers all this up. You're not going to even see any of this carpet stuff here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to go right here in between these two woofers and I'm going to go ahead and just drill through. this screw here and go ahead and go ahead and mount it down like that there's remember we only really need to do one screw there because there's wood glue underneath there once the wood glue dries that's what's gonna bond to the upper layer and hold that in place so we really don't need to do too many screws so we'll do another pilot hole pretty much the same place Right there. That down. Put another screw. And now, top of our enclosure is solid. It's mounted securely to the vehicle and we have a some internal bracing added to this we already have our sub wires through the enclosure hook up to the subs holes drilled and then we seal up around the wire so there's no air leaks so now what we need to do is go ahead and vacuum this out make sure all the dust and everything is out of the enclosure and then we're going to go ahead and put some acoustical stuffing in here and go ahead and install the woofers. So I've been connect, co connecting my tick 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 tick. All right, so we got the enclosure vacuumed out, and now we're going to go ahead and put our acoustical treatment in there, which is black hole stuff. So we're going to put two pieces in here um, very carefully. <laughs> I'm going to pull this, stuff this down through this hole. We might actually have to, it's actually way too big. Let's see if we can get this, this away. There, that's actually good. That piece fits in like that. And then we'll go ahead and, <clears throat> we got another piece going in here. Um, it's right here, so we'll go ahead and get some scissors real quick I'll have to run away from you guys go grab some scissors but we'll cut some other rectangles to fit into there <laughs> all right got the scissors so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down in here. Basically what this does is it will trick the woofers into thinking they're in a larger enclosure. And from our measurements, this seems to be about 20%, um, adds about 20% volume to the enclosure, which in turn will give us 
better lower end response, more output in the lower lower range of the subwoofer system. So I think that's a good amount of damping in there. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and unbox all the woofers and we'll go ahead and get those. Already off, I think they're already all like that, right? Yep. These particular Focal drivers are designed for small sealed enclosures, which are really great. They require minimal airspace to give you the most output, especially in the lower range. Your conventional woofer, a conventional 10, you could probably maybe get away with a pair of them in that airspace. Um, these, since they require hardly any airspace at all, we were able to fit four in that cabinet here in the floor of the vehicle to get the most output and keep, still keep the install stealth and you know still leave trunk space for the customer so so we'll go ahead and get all these wired up in here we're gonna do them in a parallel configuration got the woofers wired up all these acoustical stuff inside the enclosure now we're going to go ahead and start working on the first layer of the system so this is our first panel that goes in here between the amplifiers and trims out the amps are actually unmounted because they're going to have to be moved a little bit to line up with everything and then our over this is our first trim which will get installed over the amplifiers like this it's another trim and then there's another layer on top of this so right now we're going to work on this we're going to do some some profiling with the router router table to add a profile around each woofer and then we're going to work on adding a profile to this and go ahead and get our our logo stuff done for the middle which we'll go over um, so we're going to work on getting basically this layer done, this first bottom layer, then this trim ring. We're going to go ahead and wrap these, get them all secure and everything, um, and then we'll move on to the next. So for now, let's go uh, rock and roll in the wood shop and go ahead and get this stuff routered and wrapped and installed back in the vehicle. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to be running wiring into the middle because we have a floating um, badge acrylic accent piece with some lighting that's going in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the table saw and cut a groove in the back of this panel to run the wiring basically to the center here. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to find the middle of this which is it is 11 and a half. So we'll go ahead and set this to centered on 11 and a half. Right there. So our cut line is in the middle. Go ahead and 
actually lowered the lowered the blade so it's up about three eighths of an inch or so. So we're gonna just cut a groove underneath here without cutting through the whole panel. <laughs> Cut a channel in there to run the wiring. We have some lights running from the uh, factory um, light in the trunk. It's going to come down and power up these LEDs that are mounted here in the middle. So we needed to create a way to get the wires underneath to this location. So that's the first step. And then second step, we're going to go ahead and throw a, basically a profile on this to give it some some type of shape. So we'll go ahead and do that next. thing we did I did a little more softer rounder look that's what I'm gonna do do something a little more aggressive so we're gonna set this this height about right there actually a 45 degree chamfer is what it's called so it'll slope down to the woofer you notice it cut into this square right here actually you're not going to see this square because there's a piece that floats above and covers this so you're not going to see any of this stuff so we'll go ahead and repeat the process to all four holes or the, the three others do stuff um, I always like to soften any type of hard lines so when you wrap it it just has a lot better better look so what I'm gonna do this is gonna be butted up against the amplifier but I still want to just literally set it right there. it's not gonna do anything but just want to take the edge off a lot better. You can see we just took the, the edge off there so it's not sharp. And the vinyl rolls over. Be a nice transition to the next amplifier. So let's go. Uh... This back in place. And we got that nice, nice chamfer. 
and then we have this piece is going to fit on top. <laughs> it's going to fit up over top. And we, <clears throat> we're going to actually end up adding some acrylic parts here, an eighth inch. So what I want to do, I want to add another, like I was saying, I don't want to have a sharp edge. This is going to get wrapped in vinyl, so I don't want this to be a sharp edge. I want there to be like some type of transition to it. So we'll go ahead and pick another router bit um, <clears throat> to do a tra to a transition on here or finish this edge. And we'll go pick a different bit. And um, I'm probably going to do a more of a round over on this one just to show some contrast. And we've already done a round over type bit on our insert here. So we'll have a combination of curves and kind of like uh, sharper lines, which is common in most vehicles, right? You have sharp corners and round corners and all of it together comes out pretty cool. So we'll kind of follow that order when doing an install. So I'm happy with this chamfer on here. I think it's gonna look good. Um, go ahead and add a chamfer to this and then go ahead and get some vinyl on these parts. And then we can go ahead and get this layer installed. Go ahead and put a profile on this part, this next part. We still kind of want to, we want to soften the edge but still have somewhat of a harder hard line because we're going to add another layer with some laser cut acrylic parts that we're going to put on here so I'm going to choose to use this mini handrail style bit which adds a nice little soft touch to this which I really like so we'll set our height on our bit Awesome. Go ahead and literally take that edge off, make it roll in real nice. Nothing too crazy. So we'll go ahead and wrap this in some material. <clears throat> Basically have these two, two layers right here, bottom piece, and then our next trim ring kind of trims out everything. And then on top of this, we'll have our left and right pieces that are going to be actually wrapped in carpet to trim out to the edge of the vehicle. So this is going to be like the focal point of the install here, which will be this stuff. So we're going to go ahead and grab some material that we're going to use and go ahead and get these things wrapped. All right, okay, so we got, we're going to wrap this, this first panel with vinyl. Um, we got the material cut to size. Um, we're going to go ahead and apply a nice even coat of glue on here and then I have even coat of glue on here and then we're going to go ahead and let it tack up and then that's basically how the glue works. This has to be dry, this has to be dry and then they contact each other and stick together. So um, go ahead and do like I said glue here, glue here, let it tack up and then we'll start the wrapping process of this using a heat gun to heat it up to form it and get it all nice and tight on these panels. So first step first is applying a nice even coat of glue and unfortunately our air compressor is in here with us so it might get a little crazy.
sure you get even, especially down in here. You want to get glue all the way around to every single piece so the vinyl sticks and it doesn't come off. tacked up so I'll go ahead and lay this I'll hide behind here for a second and lay this down here on our piece and then I can go ahead and start pushing it down start pushing it in these circles Push down, go around again. this over all nice and pushed down now we got to go ahead and add some more glue to this area because we're going to end up cutting this vinyl and heating it and folding it over and wrapping it around the panel the rest of it will literally just cut cut flush coat on the back um, in the front I try to make it real even and not so globbed up just to make sure the vinyl is uh, down smooth um, this I do a heavier coat so sometimes it takes a lot longer to dry literally if it's wet like this and you go to stick this it's probably just gonna peel back it's not gonna bond real real well and get stuck down to the panel real tight the goal is to make it super tight and bubble free and really nice on there so let this tack up a little bit more let me grab my my upholstery stuff all right so i got a blade here i'm going to go ahead and just cut out a small circle in the middle of each one down stick down real good go ahead and 
if we just cut that. Playing a fish. <laughs> All right, so got that wrapped over. Now we need our trusty scissors. I'm gonna go ahead and cut some reliefs all the way around the circle. like to stay about double the thickness of the material wrapping over the slit you know double the thickness away from the, the edge there so you don't go to wrap it and your slit goes over the over the edge and you see it but you got to relieve the vinyl with slits like this so it can stretch over the circle heat gun Push it in again. See now we got this all wrapped up all the way to the edge now. And now we can gonna go ahead and heat it up some more. Top and bottom all the way around. Get it nice and warm again. We should be able to start wrapping it up and over the edge. Stuff. 
stuff down real good. I'm gonna take my blade, basically. We're gonna do it over and over again until we're done. Okay, so we got the, pull this out of here. So we got the first layer done down here. We got this wrapped um, in place. We got this upper trim wrapped and kind of in place. We're gonna go ahead and wrap some other pieces and mount all this stuff. But next thing we're gonna work on is the center trim, which sits in here through this and Basically, it's kind of like a, just a center focal point. We're gonna put his uh, logo and some design work. We're gonna go ahead and cut that out right now on the laser. And then we're gonna go ahead and um, wrap this and make a channel in here for some lighting and go ahead and get all this wired up with some blue LEDs and um, go ahead and do all the acrylic work and get this wrapped and get this part set in here. And we'll get our wiring ran and get all this hooked up and get this base mounted um, and then we'll move on to the next layer of the trunk so let's go take this over by the laser we'll go ahead and cut the parts for this on the laser and then we'll go into the uh, fab shop and go ahead and wrap this and get this ready for the next part So we got a piece of 8 inch black acrylic in the laser right now and you want to see on my screen here we have a bunch of different parts um, that we're going to cut right now. This is the, tr the base black, this is the trim ring in black and then we're going to also move to a different material and go ahead and cut out the logo and everything that's going to light up. And we also have some acrylic trims that we're going to cut to put.
output, you guys will see that go kind of on the amp amplifier rack and, and trim out the amps a little bit more, make it look really cool. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut this first. So we're going to go ahead and turn this off. We are already have it set up in the laser, so we're going to go ahead and cut this now. Go ahead and frame it. It's gonna, the laser is going to go around and basically tell us where it's going to cut. Make sure we're in the right area on our work. Did we auto focus it yet? So it's focused. Ready to go, so if that fits, we'll go ahead and press start. And it's going to go ahead and cut out our parts for us. Okay, okay, you got these parts cut on the laser. This is actually black acrylic, and they fit in there. Look at that, isn't that cool? It's amazing, right? Mm hmm. All right, so now we got that, and then we cut these other little parts. Let's walk over there, Nathan. I'll show you guys where these end up end up at. These actually end up going here and here, which this is totally needs to be moved. So these end up slide this way dude those actually have to be like that dude so these these actually stick down over here and our center layer goes in so let's cut the uh, acrylic out next.
got all these parts cut. Let's go wrap this. We actually have to put a channel in here for the um, LED tape. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to add an extra groove in here to make this a little bit deeper because we have to add LED tape along here and then put our acrylic so it lights up and we don't want to see the LED tape. It needs to sink down in there a little bit more so I'm going to go ahead and do some router magic. So while that's tacking up, we got our acrylic parts that we're going to go ahead and we're going to put some profiles on these with the router and we're going to actually go ahead and paint these uh, satin black instead of leaving them gloss black. So we'll go ahead and put some profiles, do some sanding and go ahead and paint these. Let's go over to the router. and. I'm going to take a scrap of eight just to make sure that my bit is set at the height that I want. Take those where we can see something. So we'll end up sanding these, um, some sandpaper, and then prime them and paint them. But first, let's get some some vinyl on this this piece. Let's move it over here onto our non-stick other piece of vinyl.
Got some stuff done. All right, check this out, guys. We got. Um, let me pull this out of here. So, this is a trim that we are painting to go around. We finished actually. Let me back up a little bit. So we we're going through the layers. Bottom layer, center logo. We cut that out on the laser with his logo. Little Mustang action going on here. And then we got this trim. That basically trims around the amplifier and subwoofer system and then we're going to add a, the up next is adding the next layer to this which is the final basically trim to trim out to the edge of the vehicle um, and that's going to be finished in a trunk liner that matches the vehicle um, so what we're going to do now is go ahead and finish painting these and while these are drying we'll go ahead and start working on getting this um, this final trim panel fit to the vehicle and, and Bondo matched and everything so it fits nice and nice and right and we're gonna go ahead and wrap it so let's go go do that all right so we're gonna go ahead and paint these we primered them and now we're gonna paint these with a satin black paint make them look like a factory plastic trim part between the amplifier so our our ring sits on something this one actually mounts up on the, the woofer trim and this one mounts on the floor behind the woofer trim um, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and wrap these in um, some trunk liner because you can't really see them so and we want to wrap over the top so we have a cushion for the trim panel to sit on so it's not sitting directly wood to wood or on the amplifiers themselves so I'm just going to go ahead and wrap these up real quick.
so we're gonna go ahead and mount down the this back piece first we go ahead and mount this down to the floor there and here So we got that mounted down. And these are our LED wires right here for our lighting. We're gonna go ahead and get these twisted up so they can run over. plenty of wire so we'll do a termination right here and go ahead and get this hooked up so this this will turn this on I'll move all this stuff over here for now piece that goes back up in here so this is gonna go through the enclosure right. And now this got those parts down. Now this is gonna sit here and we can go ahead and mount this mount this down but first we're gonna make sure it's centered and how we're gonna find center of this is we design those pieces we just painted that fit on here so we'll line those up and get this all all centered over our opening and then we'll go ahead and mount this we'll do some pre-drill some holes in this panel and then this can mount mount down and then those parts will stick to the amplifier with a two-sided tape. And then we'll two-sided tape our trim ring, basically a trim ring to go around here to hide the LEDs and the, the edge of the acrylic. And then that'll be done, and then we can work on the next layer. Let's go get our parts. All right, guys, we're um, finally on our last layer of the trunk build. Um, so we have you guys can see kind of everything's in place here. Um, the last layer is the final trim, which is gonna be finished in the carpet material to match the factory side panels. So we have our pieces cut out. It's a left and a right piece seamed down the middle because if this was one piece, it wouldn't really fit in the vehicle. It has to go in, <coughs> excuse me, in two separate pieces. So it's fit, it fits in here and Obviously, you guys can see right here where these these two touch each other. But what we need to do is, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this in carpet. So what we need to do is we need to actually take material off of each side, off the left piece and off the right piece. So once we wrap it in carpet, it goes back to this this dimension because we have another piece that's going to fit in to the floor opening 
So we don't want to stretch, we don't want this opening to stretch out. We want to keep it the same exact size so the insert will fit in to the floor. So this, the, basically this shape of the, the cutout stays the same. So we're gonna go back there, do some router work on this. We're actually gonna reduce basically a 16th of an inch off of the left and the right, which will leave us an eighth inch gap for basically two pieces of carpet. So the, carp the left one and the right one will be carpeted and they'll meet together. And, and that's basically requires about an eighth inch of um, gap. So we're gonna go ahead and take that off of here, take that off of that piece on these, and then we can put them back in and we're gonna end up gluing some strips around here to get it to fit up to the edge a lot closer and do some body work and stuff and then we'll go ahead and get this wrapped and installed. I think you can cut. All right, so now we're here in the uh, wood shop and I wanna show you guys this. This is a special router bit that's designed to remove, it's, it's called a rabbit bit, but it's a 1 16th rabbit bit. And this is designed to take off uh, a sixteenth of a material at a time. So we're going to basically set this bearing so it's riding the actual wood. Um, and we're going to end up just flipping off. did that and reduced the sixteenth of an inch of material there. And I'll do it to this section here. So. Now we have that that rabbit. So now we've got to set we're gonna cut that lip off now. So now it's a perfectly flush piece. Just set our bearing to ride on the this rabbit here and it's gonna cut this lip off. piece which is going to have to be reduced as well ever so slightly we'll go ahead and because this is actually this part is actually cut exactly the same dimension as this so we're going to have to reduce this ever so slightly so it fits down inside this area Get this all. So now we got it lined up in the trunk and you guys can see the gap here. This holds them symmetrical, keeps this opening right. So now what we're gonna do is we got some strips that we're gonna glue that we made that fit up to the edge of the vehicle better and then we're gonna wipe it with some body filler. So there'll be an ever slow slight transition and just finish it at right perfectly to the edge of the vehicle okay so we got the this in now we're gonna we have these strips of eighth inch mdf that we cut that we're going to use 
you guys can see down in here that there's some some gaps like right here um, there's a couple ways to do this you can either tape the whole vehicle up and body match it or you could cut this panel perfectly from the get-go um, to fit exactly into the vehicle which we could do if we had crazy amounts of wood to waste um, or a 3d scanner and all that stuff we don't have that so this is a I guess an older school trick that I use in this situation doing like a carpet panel so I cut these to fit you guys can see this fits a lot better to the vehicle so what we're gonna end up doing um, we're using carpet so it's very forgiving so it's gonna fill you guys can see I have about an eighth inch gap on this trim panel to the back of the vehicle so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna CA glue this right in here down to our original panel and leave about an eighth inch gap there and we're gonna do that all the way around we're gonna do it all the way around this the sides and the back area the, the seat section meets up to the back seat perfectly so we're gonna just take some some CA glue, run a bead on it, make sure we get some there, put some activator on it, we'll go ahead and stick this down in here, let that In there. I don't want to glue my fingers. So get that there. Put it on the, the car side this time. A little bit better idea. And some CA glue there. Get some activator. And then we can basically just place this right here on the car hold it for a second and it'll literally just glue in place you guys can still see we have our our gap here for our carpet and then we're going to move on to the sides a little bit more difficult i'm going to add a bead of glue right around our edge here. I don't want to get it too close. There we go. This goes in like that. Nope. Like this, I mean. <laughs> Just kidding spray some activator on here go ahead and slide this in place let it sit for a second
ahead and pull this insert out. Set this to the side. And we can go ahead and pull these out. trim this trim this back which I had marked already but I just covered it up so <laughs> let's take these into the pad shop. All right, so we got these pieces glued on here. This left side was a little, little crazy. Got it on there. Now we're gonna take some body filler. Go ahead and mix this up. And we're going to body fill these pieces together to create a smooth transition between them. let this dry for a while and then we'll come back and use a DA sander and sand it all smooth and uh, that's it. All right so we got the uh, body filler laid out on here and we took a little break and let it dry. I'm going to go ahead and get the DA sander and go ahead and sand it get it all flat and then we're going to go ahead and wrap this thing and put it in the vehicle. got these uh, sanded with DA and transitioned into those side pieces. Now we're going to go ahead and cover these in the trunk liner material. I'm going to go ahead and cut this right here off.
guys. So we got the um, we got the top layer carpeted and installed in the vehicle. It fits real nice. Everything lines up. It fits well to the side of the vehicle. Now we're going to go into the back into the shop and we're going to go ahead and reduce the insert piece with the router and go ahead and wrap that. So let's go do that. All right. So we have this. Uh, you guys remember that we. We reduced it slightly, a 64th of an inch, so it would at least fit into the panel. Now we added carpet to the panel, and now we're going to add carpet to this. So we're going to want to go ahead and reduce this about an eighth of an inch all the way around. So once this is carpeted, it'll fit into our opening. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Put in a bit. We're going to change our bit. We're going to put in an eighth inch rabbit, which is right here. This is for carpet, which is an eighth of an inch. Change our tool. Basically how a rabbit bit works is your bearing is an eighth inch smaller in diameter than the cutting blade. So you run the, the, the bearing halfway up your material and then it cuts a, basically cuts an eighth inch of the material away from your piece. You go ahead and set that up about halfway. And go ahead and turn this on. out of there now we'll just take it over and use a flush trim bit the bearing is the same diameter as the cutting blade so that it makes a flush cut make sure our bearing is set it's kind of set thicknesses on both panels. Very important. So now I'm going to change bits again and raise this up. Change this bit out. We're going to go to a 3 8 rabbit. Explain why we're doing this now. So we're going to set this rabbit bit a sixteenth above the cutting blade, a sixteenth above the table. I'm going to use this straight edge ruler here and go ahead and set my cutting height of my blade a little bit higher. Perfect. So, just about, it's about a sixteenth or so, which is fine. We're going to go ahead and do a rabbit around this panel. We add 
added a 16th inch rabbet here. And the purpose for this is we're going to wrap the carpet. This is the front. We're going to go ahead and carpet it. We're going to wrap the carpet around and we're going to cut right along this, this rabbit line. And then we're going to actually take another piece of carpet and push it down into this rabbit line and trim the carpet here right on this rabbit line so we can carpet both sides of this panel so it's finished on both sides. So if it gets removed, it's you don't see the raw material behind it. Nice finished look. So, and another thing that I want to do is I'm going to put a profile because what's going to happen is we're going to have carpet on here and carpet on here and it's going to end up lifting up the, um, the panel ever so slightly. So we're going to just take this edge off just so there's a better transition. I'm going to go back to my mini handrail bit. off this and it kind of slows in a little bit so this is ready to wrap so we'll go back over here and go ahead and wrap this up let's get this let's clean off our work table find the blower the blower's right here. The blower. <laughs> awesome. So let's keep this carpet. This is the last piece we have. Get that clean. Flip it over. Go ahead and lay our piece on there. Let me kind of go ahead and cut this to size. We ordered this carpet specifically for this job. It's actually two of these jobs. We've already done one of these Mustangs completely. Um, so it looks like I ordered just enough carpet. Actually, not enough because we're going to end up doing the, the back side of this in a different different color that we have in stock, which will be fine. At least it'll be finished. Look good. A little contrast never hurt anything. So, we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to flip this over and make sure our carpet is going the right direction. I'm going to go ahead and put a nice layer of glue on here.
go. I can go ahead and stick this now, but I'm going to go ahead and let it tack up so that when I fold this over, I can push it down into this groove line without it really sticking too hard to the in here because I'm going to want to keep this kind of clean to carpet this, this whole thing. Trusty pry tool here. This works great for pushing the material down into this edge. And we want to go ahead and upholster it. I'll literally just work this up. Kind of keep it up out of the way so it doesn't stick on the rest of the panel. You can pull it, stretch it, and stick it right into that line. Oops. Take my time, go around. Pushing it right into that little edge groove that we have. that pushed in that groove all the way around. Now we're gonna thought I had a there we go. This is the one I want. Mm. Sharp blade. <laughs> Alright. So now I'm just gonna take my blade and I'm gonna run it right in that groove. Very carefully. Go all the way around. Again, cut right in that groove. up a little bit. Alright, so now we can carefully pull this off. like that.
it is. It's factory. <laughs> no system in it now. <laughs> which is great. That's the whole idea. So, yep, you gotta. And you guys noticed we drilled. We hand drilled. We drilled a bunch of uh, holes in this panel here so the subwoofers will actually play through this. Um, and we tried it out and it works fine. So, actually sounds a little bit better with it on there. Kind of does. It's kind of crazy. So, that's it. And then he can, this can actually sit back here or whatever if he wants to show it off, which is cool. And what we're going to do now. Um, the last piece of basically the upholstery and stuff. We're gonna make a little I'm actually gonna put this back in here. We're gonna make a little pull tab. So we have our center line right here, which is the the seam. And we're just gonna put a mark right here on that. That marks our center. And now we're gonna go make a little a little pull tab so he doesn't have to use a pry tool to get this out so we'll make a little vinyl pull tab let's go do that real quick this piece of vinyl here that we used for the install do it so it stretches, it doesn't stretch. We're gonna make our pull tab this way. Never throw away your scraps when you're doing an install, <laughs> okay? So we'll set this up right here. We'll go ahead and cut a strip of this vinyl like that. And then, Put this on low pressure. And it up. Let it dry. Always have to wait and let it dry. It's so much fun. Especially for vinyl. Yeah, especially for like carpet, you can you can glue it. Wait 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and stick it. But this. If I try to stick this now, it'll stick. See, it doesn't even really stick. It's too wet. It's too wet. It needs to be dry, which is kind of weird. I learned this from an upholstery guy I worked with long ago, which was really awesome to learn. <laughs> Flap it in the air or something, get this thing to dry up. Usually when I'm wrapping like a like a dash or something really really complex, I'll put a heavy layer of glue on that on the piece and then glue this up and actually let it dry overnight, um, and then come back the next day and start working it. And you can use a heat gun to reactivate the glue um, a little bit and it'll stick. So so now this is pretty much dry. So what I'm going to do now is there's an imaginary center line here. I'm just going to go ahead and fold this to that center line all the way down. Do that. And then take this. It's actually not exactly what I was supposed to do, but it'll work. And just fold this over until it touches that other side. All right. Get this down like that. Then I'll literally really make 
stick it like that, then you can fold it over and you have a really nice pull tab. So then we can take our scissors here. Good. Cut this off. I'll do the whole thing. Extra long. So then we can. So what we want to do is we want to do a little a little pull, right? That you can get your finger in. Finger fits in it. Go ahead and get that there. I, can, I just do like a crisscross staple, staple underneath. scissors and shift change <laughs> I'm cold again all right so got our loop bam you can pull it out of the floor now push it back in the floor so that's pretty much it guys that's a custom floor we trimmed out got our you know, cover panel wrapped on both sides, pull tab, floor is trimmed out, got our logo, subs, pretty awesome. And we already know it sounds awesome, so <laughs> we actually, this one has Kevlar in it, um, the one we did before has uh, flax from Focal, so this one actually should, the front stage should be uh, a little more intense and fun, so. Now it's time to uh, move on to getting the doors back assembled and put the tweeters in. So we'll show you how we do that. Hey there. <laughs> Alright, so next thing we're working on here is mounting our Focal uh, KX3 tweeter. Um, we have this and the reason why we decided to make an adapter for it this is the factory mount for the tweeter and this physically does not fit. It's a lot larger tweeter. Um, I believe the, the flax the flax tweeter and the other the, it's the TAM and the TKM tweeters from Focal will actually pop right in here. Um, you don't really need this adapter but you could technically we could make one and, and you could use it. But for this particular tweeter, we had to make a, a come up with a way to mount the tweeter in there. So Nathan actually designed these and cut them out on the laser with some eighth-inch acrylic, and then we got some some screws that we're going to use to mount that into this location. So this part is you can see it's like melted plastic. It's like hot welded into the uh, into the pillar so what I normally do just use a pair of flush cuts and basically just trim try to trim this plastic away very carefully sometimes it's a not the easiest thing in the world to do but you can get there and hopefully pop this away get this plastic cut out of here if I can get the thing open enough you can cut that off that one's probably the easiest one to do <laughs> I don't remember how we did this I think it I think you just pulled it off uh, <laughs> yeah let's try to very carefully get this off. Just take my time here. We don't want to mess anything up. Try to get this off. Slowly. 
you just basically want to cut this plastic off. They do make special drill bits to take this stuff off. You can literally just kind of pop this out of there. Once you get the hot weld trimmed a lot, Also heat this with a torch. Mm -hmm. um, you can just pop it off of there. You can see it. We'll trim that up. Trim these kind of flat. There we go. So now you can see you have these like plastic tube looking things almost. These are actually probably longer and it goes through this and they put a machine on there and melt them. It's almost like a plastic rivet. So this, oh, I'll drop it. So our tweeter will go through and there's a little indention that he did, which is cool. So it actually line up and pop right in and then you can put that it'll line up over those holes and then there's a special plastic screw designed for plastic that'll go in you can very gently just get these started by notice these screws are flat on the bottom and they're designed for plastic and they we ordered them specifically for this application you get these tightened down in here nice and tight and voila, tweeters mounted in there. Super easy. Good job, Nathan, on that one. So, and you could technically save this and hot melt it back on there if you wanted to put it back to factory. But that's our solution for mounting a Focal tweeter in there. So now we can get this prepped and put on a plug. Got these. This is what we're putting on this side, Nathan. Mm -hmm. Now, which is great, this we have the other gender of this plug in the car, so now we can just go ahead and take just this to the vehicle, plug it in, and install the pillar. And if we want to remove the pillar, we can always just unplug the tweeter. We don't have to cut any wires, which makes it real great. If you don't have something like this, you can also use um, bullet-style connectors, um, which you can get. You can crimp this on the on the car side, this on the tweeter side, and just, it'll plug in. But we use these Molex plugs that work real great for what we're doing. So that's it. That's how you put the tweeter in, and you just repeat the process on the same side, trim everything, pop it off, screw that in, and your tweeter's installed. Now we can go put these in the car. All right, so after a few uh, painstaking minutes, we got these uh, pillars back in the vehicle. It's not the easiest thing to do. We actually did it off camera, um, but yeah, it's fun. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> it's the hardest part of working on this vehicle. Um, but yeah, pillars are in, tweeter adapters are done. We got the uh, doors all, all wrapped up, uh, sound treated, speakers installed. We um, 
custom machine to speaker adapter for the three inch um, and we have a plug um, so it plugs right into the factory wiring which is really awesome I can get the plug back in there we go perfect so plugs right in uses factory wiring um, same with the mid base we have a plug plugs right into factory wiring of course made our HDPE speaker adapters and installed the um, sound wave edge uh, gasket around the mid base driver to seal it to the door um, we also I believe did some sound treatment on the door panels themselves um, so now next step um, is get these doors back on and we can go ahead and tune this thing that door on, got the tweeters in, got the trunk done, looking good, just got this last door to put on, mid range, Man. also have a base knob mounted over here sub-level for the four tens in the trunk also obviously OEM head unit and uh, we got all our wiring hooked up down here in the factory kick so looking good looking good looks kind of stock in here which is great that's what the customer wants luckily this car has a stock three-way location mid base six and a half three inch and tweeter so we did a Focal KX3 three-way kit in here Powered on two Moscone Pro 530s with four flax shallow tins. So it's going to be a pretty badass system. So I'm going to get this thing tuned up and see what it sounds like. Alright guys, thanks for watching the uh, Mustang video. I hope you enjoyed it. system came out really, really awesome. Um, so up next, you can see in the background, we got a lot of Shelby action going on. We just filmed, finished the uh, Shelby Mustang. We got some more... Shelby's in the background here that we're working on currently um, but up next on the chopping block will be the Bronco build so please tune into that and check it out thank you guys